Hello, this is Jan from Red Toad Art Studio and today we are going to learn how to watercolor the picture here titled House on a Hill. And um, this is just kind of a moody painting and I just love it. And it is inspired by an AI picture that I saw when we were putting prompts into AI and learning how to do it and we had something about a house and up came this beautiful moody house. So I decided I wanted to learn how to paint that and I'm going to pass that on to you today. And it really is very easy. So you will need watercolor paper and I would suggest you have the heaviest watercolor paper you can at least what 140 pound because we're going to do some wet on wet you will need some tape to tape it down for that very reason pencil eraser a permanent marker and I'm just using a sharpie and I have two sizes of paint brushes. I have a larger size and I have a smaller size for more of my detail work. My size is, my large one is a six and my small one is a five. But brands do differ, so your paint brushes may not be the same. And then obviously I have paint. And I've already mixed up some washes. It looks like a lot here, but this is from other paintings. I have a dark blue wash and a light blue wash and some black. That's all we need for this painting. Now, is that everything? Well, a paper towel. We always need one of these when we're watercoloring. If I've forgotten anything, I'll let you know. Obviously, the water, the paper towel, the brushes, these are all everyday tools if you're watercoloring. Coloring. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is draw a little bit of an outline for our house. Now when you do watercolor you want to put your pencil lines in very light. So I'm going to show you how to draw this on a scratch piece of paper where I can draw dark. In fact I'll draw with my marker so you can really see it. Towards the center of the paper up just a little bit you want to draw your house and here's the simple way to do it just think of the house as a rectangle so you have the side of the house and this side is going to go down a little farther and the bushes and clouds are going to cover up part way and here's the other side of the house just not as far down now kind of eyeball here where the middle of that peak would be for your roof Draw down like this, like this, and here at these corners, right here, come in. This shows how the roof is going back. Now, in some of my pictures, I had a chimney here, and others I had it here. In fact, I can show you some of the differences. In one of the first ones, we had the chimney in the center and an aerial. You know, what old house doesn't have an old TV aerial on it? And then old posts here where a gate went down the hillside. In my last one, I have the chimney on the side, which is more normal for how a house would be built. So you can decide. You can have that chimney anywhere you want it. So come in here and place a chimney. And then on top of that chimney, I like to do like three little lines and go back across, just like that. Over here, let's put an old TV area. So a line, just crooked, and it's about to fall off. Two lines crossing, and then a couple lines on this, and you will have your TV area. Now, right here in the peak, you can either do a square window or a circular window. I have done both. And this one, I did a full-size square window, and I like that. And this one, I added a little circular attic window, which I like even better. 
So you can play with this any way you want in your details. But let's go ahead, put a little circle up here in the attic. Now, you're doing this with your pencil in very light lines. Remember that. Later, you will go over it with ink. Then we need to do two sets of windows, upstairs windows. Okay. These do not have to be exact. It's amazing how your mind fills in all the details. We're not going to put the panes in. We just paint those in later. Let's do some first story windows. But now we want the bushes that are going to be painted in to come up over these windows. There we go. Now go ahead and draw in your railings for your old, oh, your steps and things that went here. Now, I don't have enough room on this paper to do more. You just put as many as you want in. And then I think the only thing I usually put in are a couple birds in the sky. And again, that is totally up to you if you want birds. So that's what you need to do with your pencil on your watercolor sheet, just lightly. And that's all the drawing we need to do. So let's go back. And put that on our watercolor sheet. All right. So very lightly, about this part of our paper, I'm going to start drawing the house. Can you see that? Probably not real well. I'm going to go a little darker than I should, just so you can see it. I'm going to sketch in the house. And you could do different things to this house. It is your house on your hill. We're going to put the peak of the roof. Our little lines here where the roof goes back. I'm going to put my chimney right here. And remember, this may be a dilapidated old house up there. Things don't need to be straight on it. It can be as crooked as can be. I'm going to... Get my little round window here. My little round attic window. And upstairs windows. Remember to do these as light as you can. And still be able to see what you're doing. But I want you to see what I'm doing too. I think you can probably see this enough. Downstairs windows, and we're just going to do them part way. You might need to uh, fill that in a little bit later. There we go. I'm going to put my porch railings. I'm going to come down a little on that line. My porch railing out here. Can you imagine the little walkway and steps that lead up to this house on this hill. And you know, every one of these can be a little different. They don't have to all be alike. Do this several times. I'm going to do a, do a little fallen piece there. Couple birds up here. There we go. Our drawing part is done. Now our next step is to tape this down because we're going to do wet on wet watercolor. And this will get really wet. So let's tape it down. Now if you want, you can draw some little lines so you know where to tape. I'm just going to eyeball it. All right, we're all taped and ready to go. Now, one of the frustrating things about watercolor is the fact that you have to let things dry between layers and wait for it to dry. And for this first round, we're going to do a lot of wet on wet. So get your biggest brush out. 
for me that's my number six I could use a bigger one yet but I like my number six have clean water now we want to get our whole page wet just slosh it on there and be sure you get all of the page wet that you're not missing big areas and we do want this to soak into our paper just a little bit we don't want it to dry we don't want it to dry but we want it to be wet but we don't want puddles excuse the funny sound here I keep running into my camera holder and just work your way down here and get all of this wet and in fact I like to go and go over it one more time be sure I get it wet this is what makes the soft puffy clouds and foliage is having the wet water on your paper there we go now you can lay your big fat brush to the side Get your smaller brush and get your paint washes right close here. And the first thing we're going to do is go into this light blue and start dabbing it in to the top left corner there. And let the paint do its thing. That's what gives it so much interest is what the paint does. We want a little paint in the corners here. We want to leave the center area fairly light so that the house shows up. And now we want to mound the paint up here under the house and come down. Now, unfortunately, this is going to have to dry. And since it's wet on wet, you may have to let this dry even overnight. Now, with the beauty of technology, I'll be right back with you as soon as this dries. But this is, I think, some of the frustrating parts of watercolor, is letting it dry. Now, this is the problem with wet on wet. I'm getting puddles, and I don't want puddles. So get your paper towel and dab some of this extra paint up with your paintbrush. Because we don't want puddles. There we go. Now I want to encourage a little bit of drippage down, or what will look like drippage. And with this light colored paint, it won't show much, but it will add a little bit of atmosphere to get some, like, like it's been raining that day. In a way, it can be kind of a, oh, a sad, lost kind of picture. Are you looking at your old home? It was up on the hill and now it's abandoned and neglected now while it's still wet come in now to your darker paint add a little bit up in the corner we don't want to add a lot of it but enough to give some differences in color it's a rainy day after all and there'll be clouds now I have a very well you know I think I'll let that dark color stay there and let it dry it will give it some interesting contrast now we're going to right through one of these we're going to give a nice let the paint see how that paints almost making bushy textures already Isn't that interesting this is using what watercolor does that makes it hard, but using it to look neat to our advantage. Let's make some more drips down here. Isn't that interesting? What is now see, and yours probably will, unless you have a 300 pound stretched paper, it's going to buckle and wrinkle. And this does make it kind of hard because I have a puddle here that I need to keep getting rid of and try not to ruin my picture but you will need to watch that I have a big like kind of valley there 
And that's why uh, your best watercolor papers are like 300 pounds and all cotton. And as much as a lot of us would like to use the best of everything, a lot of us are on a budget. And I'm sure today, the way groceries and things cost, if you have a family, you may not be buying the best of art supplies if you have to choose between doing art and feeding your family. So we're doing it on the cheaper art supplies at our site because so many of us are in that. Uh, stage of life where things are so expensive but we still want to do art so we are going to quit here and let this dry so this may be an hour for you it may be two hours it may be overnight but we need to let this dry now I'm checking out there is one more thing I wanted to put in there we want to put just a black touch of black in here although I like the way this is right now but go into your black wash and add just a little bit at the top. Yep, in here. We need some gray skies. Remember, let the watercolor do its thing. A little bit in the corners. Gives it a vignette kind of look. And just add, dab some in different spots. And especially a little bit right down in here. Following that. And we're going to give it some drips down too. Now, you may notice a lot of my drips have kind of merged together because of the wet on wet. And that's okay. It's just supposed to look like a rainy day. Now you may have noticed your first wash is probably starting to dry a little bit, except where it buckles, and that's where it's going to take a while. I want to be sure. Give a little top edge to these bushes here. Okay, now I think I'm done. Let's let this dry. Okay, we are all dry now, and you may wonder how you can tell if it's dry enough. Well, if you have paper like mine, we had mountains and valleys, and it stayed that way for quite a while. But when it gets dry, it will flatten out. So unless it has flattened out, if it still has ridges and mountains, it probably isn't dry enough for this next step. This next step, you will use your permanent marker to outline the house and the birds. So, let's get going. You will want to outline and do some shadow work on the house. So carefully follow your lines. If your pen doesn't want to work, it could be because it's still a little damp and you just can't feel it. So, be sure it's nice and dry. I forgot to draw an aerial on here. We can add it now, though. A TV aerial. Because I really like the way those look. Let's add that aerial out here. There we go. Now, the windows. I do these a little different. I don't draw around the window frame that we have in pencil. I just blacken in the panes with black because we don't want this 
outline too strongly. And when we come along and add a little bit of shadow paint, it will be enough. So just go in and darken the window panes. You know, there's so much you could do here. Use your imagination. It just dawned on me it'd be neat to have an old electric pole with lines coming into the house. Now, on these, where there's bushes coming up over the windows, just partially fill them in. Just like that. That part is behind bushes. All right, and on this circular one, if you do a circular one, you'll have to do it like a pie cut in four pieces. Just tiny little spots here for the window panes. There we go. I'm going to add the birds while I'm here. And now our uh, railing. I think that's all with our pen. We will add some shadows. We have one more step to do, and that is to come in and add some shadows under the eaves and around the windows, and a few shadows to emphasize a little bit the bush lines in here. So, you don't want your paint? And your smaller brush. Use your paint wash that you've been using before. And go into that light blue. And let's add some shadow under the eaves of the house. And along the sides. Just to give it some definition. down along this side and now underneath each window let's give it a little shadow line of course we can't get underneath here and maybe on one of the sides add some shadow And if you want to add a little on the others, go for it. Just lightly. Let's do a little bit of let's do a little bit of um tiny little blue lines to show that it's um it's a wooden house. Okay, now up here where the bushes are coming up, we need to we need to make that a little stronger. Very uh, bushy little lines there, kind of showing where the bushes are, just to set them apart, and let's do some other little lines. And look at this right here. Let's add some grassy texture to it. A little bit of grass coming up here. Yeah. Whatever you feel like you want on this. We don't want to put too much texture in because that kind of takes will take away from the uh, the emotional feeling it has. All right. Now 
I want to add just a little bit more dark blue here. So we can get a little bit of a bush line and some textures down through here. these to show real strong. That might be stronger even yet than I want. It's hard to know till it dries. It's about enough though. We don't want too much. Now one thing that is kind of bothering me is this empty spot here. And I may bring another uh, gray streak down there. Anything that bothers you, this can be the time to just do a little bit of work to fix it. All right, I think we are done. I think if I do too much more, it may be that one thing too many. It's so easy to do that, and you can't take it back. Alrighty. I think we're going to quit there and let that dry. Now, try different things. I tried one of these in yellows and oranges and browns, and I did not like it at all. So, just a few minutes ago, actually, since I didn't like it, I decided to play with it. And I added more marks. Let's see if we can get this here. And actually, now that I added marks in the grass and stuff, I actually like it now. <laughs> it's different. And, I mean, I'm not sure what style you'd say that is. But the mark making kind of changed it and made it really neat. So, you know, go in and try these in different colors. What would purples and grays look like or purples and greens and oh just try all kinds and then try different houses and different ways of making your drips and your background now this will not look finished until it's totally dry I'm not too wild about the way some of this still looks but it should soften up as it dries I'm going to go ahead, though, and take the tape off. Remember, when you take tape off, to pull away from your picture. And don't leave it on any longer than you absolutely need to. Now, a day, even if you have to keep this till the next day, it's not too bad. But if you leave this tape on for days, which I have done, it gets hard to take off. And it may tear your paper. Now, before I get any farther, I don't like how strong this is, you know, and it's time for me to fix it before I'm done. I'm going to take a wet brush, and I'm going to soften this a little bit. Get that to blend in a little more with my picture, and then dab it off. And look how I'm lightening that up. I'm going to like that a lot better, I think. So if you don't like something, you might as well go ahead and try to fix it. Because once you don't like it, you're probably not going to change your mind. So sometimes fixing something will be just the thing that it needed. Like my yellow picture. I really like that now. Okay, now I should wait to take the tape off. But since I was already doing it, and I do have a terrible tendency to look at a picture and think, oh, I should do this. Or the next day you may want to add something to it. That helped it, but I still kind of put too much there. But you know, I can always paint another one, and this will give you the steps. Let me show you a few of these, how every one of them came out, came out different. Here's one. Just a little bit different. Now, I like the way this came down there. Another one. We had a lot more dark in there. 
I really like this one too. It's lighter. Here's one with a skinny house. And then here is my yellow one. Just try all kinds of things and practice, practice, practice. Well, I hope you had fun painting our house on a hill. And I hope you'll be back with us for our next video. So, I'm going to say bye-bye for now. I hope you're having a great day. And just have fun with your paints. Don't be scared with them. If you mess up, just try again. And look at what you did like. I like my sky in this one. I like my house. In fact, I like everything except this bottom part. So, then I think in my next picture, what can I do to make this better? Alright, so bye-bye for now.